Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. I'm Deb. I'm coming to you today with my weekly makes and to let you know why I'm filming with no makeup on, a tiny bit of lipstick and no bra on. Stay tuned if you want to find out why. Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to my subscribers and welcome if you're new to my channel. I'm Deb and this is DB Designs and Sewing Australia. I've come to show you my weekly makes and also let you know, I don't know, next time I'll be on, depends how good my painkillers are. I've got shingles and I've even got it in my eye. So you can see my eye looks a bit, my eye feels all right. Feels a bit sore if you touch it, but other than that, it's fine, but it just looks ghastly. I have got the antiviral medication and all that sort of thing, but as yet, it is, today is Friday. I went to the doctors on Wednesday and got the antiviral medication when I realized it wasn't a spider bite on my boob, it was shingles. Now my boob, back, side, armpit, and my eye. So that's a thrill, and anybody's ever had it before, they know how much pain you are in. So I can do this now because my pain medication has kicked in, I don't know how long for. So I'll first of all, I'll show you my makes for the week. The first thing I did was finish my swimsuit. Now I was making, the Cottesloe swimsuit, I'm assuming named after Cottesloe Beach in Western Australia. And I was making View B, which is this one. So it's the highest back and the highest neck. I did make a couple of alterations to it, but not really many. So this is it. And funnily enough, I had taken photos uh, with this swimsuit on, although, although not very close-up photos or not very revealing photos, before I had um, shingles. So that was good. I'd actually taken all my photos before I had shingles. So I don't have to put on any of my clothes. I've actually just been living in a light nighty because I can't stand clothes to be on me. Hence why I have no bra on because I have shingles all under my arm and around where the band of your bra goes. So, so you can see I've got my new sign up here that my girls gave me for my birthday. Um, so the only issue I had was with the elastic. I'm still, I have got a petticoat on. Um, sorry, slip, um, was the elastic. Now I am waiting for some elastic to come and I think I just got notification that said that is ready to be shipped because I was getting some other fabric with it, was, but it was fabric that has to be printed. So it takes a little while. So, and I said that was okay. I ended up just using, it was swimwear elastic, but it was black, like covered elastic. To me, it just looked like normal six mil elastic. So that's what I went with. It wasn't too hard to put on. You can see I used the cover stitch machine and that surprisingly the cover stitch machine absolutely loved it. But I did have to zigzag it on first. So I zigzagged the elastic on to the inside. So to the white part of the fabric, I zigzagged that elastic on, stretching it as I went. And then I just flipped it over and put it under the cover stitch. Now the cover stitch did not miss a stitch. It was actually very well behaved. Anybody with a cover stitch machine knows what I mean, that they can be a bit temperamental at times. So it sort of looks a bit weird and like it's turning out and stuff um, when it's not on, but when it's on, it doesn't look like that. Now, the mistake I made was I thought, oh, I think I need to reduce the size of the cover stitch. I usually um, cover stitch on the two widest ones, like you would with a wide twin needle. And I thought, oh, I need to reduce that. And so on the legs, I did the narrower one 
And then I thought, well, I don't really like the look of that. I much prefer a wide hem. I much prefer a wider cover stitch, twin stitch. So for the top and the armholes, I actually changed to a to the wider twin stitch. Probably looks a little bit better on the back. So pretty happy with that for my first go. I don't know that I was that great at getting the elastic even. Of course, I didn't divide it into four and do all that sort of thing. Actually, it's white elastic, not black. I don't know why I thought it was black. I think it was some proper swimwear elastic that I bought from Tazuti. So I didn't divide it into four and all that because I had made adjustments. So I had shortened the crutch and I had shortened the shoulders and then I would have had to work out how much I took off and how much less it needed to be. So I just put the elastic in the drawer beside me and just stretched it a little bit as I was sewing along. So I think that worked perfectly well for the top, but I'm still finding that the bum is a little bit baggy. And I don't wanna, like it's a bit baggy here, but I don't wanna reduce the, um, the width of the bottom of it, because seriously, no one wants to see that. So I think I will make the elastic in the legs a little bit tighter next time but I have got other swimwear uh, fabric that I got in that little bundle of ones that I bought for testing because they weren't expensive. Until I get it exactly right, I don't want to do it um, the expensive way, but I think I will play around a bit more with the power mesh. Um, it has got, you know, the shelf bra with the power mesh there, but it's not terribly tight. But when you've got old boobs, which are just like you know, socks, really, um, it just all mashes into one, a bit like what I've got on now. Looks like I've got no boobs now because um, they just fall down without a bra on. So a bit more playing around to do, but I am pretty happy with it for my first go at swimwear. I think it would be really easy to make kids swimwear because they're straight up and down. They don't need shelf bras. You could just put a full lining of a lining fabric that doesn't need to be stretched at all in it. I think that would be considerably easier than adults ones, but I was really doing it because I find it so hard to get bathers to fit. The bust is never very supportive. I'm bigger in the top than I am in the bottom. I have a really flat bum. And if you've seen the bathers that are around, they don't even have a bum in them. They've just got like a G-string thing, thong going on, which is really not good for old people. So that was the first thing I made. Really, really happy with this pattern. Good instructions, really good instructions. And from memory, they go through every style. So, there's four different styles and I found the instructions. I said, I'm always looking for B on it and it doesn't say do this for every style. It actually goes through it. So really, really happy with the pattern. And the next thing I made was the what's it called? Table V-neck by Sew House 7. This is a really nice jumper. And I made version five, which is the last one on the end. So I made it as a shortish vest. But my word, this real fisherman knit fabric. And I think when I looked it up, it's 97% cotton and 3% spandex in it. So it does have recovery. But man, is it hard to sew. I mean, my overlocker sewed it fine. And I actually got this front to be a really good point in the front, but stitching it, stitching it down was 
such an issue like and and it doesn't like to be pressed and I've seriously pressed the hell out of this so that's why that bit even when I put it on it's a little bit weird I thought oh once I've worn it and washed it it's good but this v-neck we cross over the v-neck instead of I think what I'd usually been doing was joining it at the v sewing it sewing it turning it over so that it already creates the v but this is a lovely way to do it. And I think even their, yes, even their ones with the narrower neck bands, so like um, this one, even their narrower neck band one has that crossover in the front. I really like it. And I found it very, very easy to do. And the instructions for this are excellent. Now, if you're worried about how you're going to do a V-neck, in a knit fabric because we all know that um, crew neck bands are much easier to do than a v-neck you're highly unlikely to mess it up so this has fabulous instructions if you are wanting to know how to do it so I can see myself using this pattern a fair bit now I think I made the now size six Size six was for a 35 inch bust, but I didn't want it to be really big and really baggy. And it's finished measurements are a 44 inch bust or 112 centimeters. And I can't even remember what my bust measures, probably smaller than a couple of weeks ago, I would suspect 105. Oh no, 104 now, I did write in the new one. So my bust's only 104 and the size six says it's for an 89 centimeter bust, but it's finished measurements are for a 112 centimeter bust. I will be inserting photos all the way through. And so I cho chose that size and I think it fits really, really well. Um, the fisherman knit, wow, it's hard to sew. I think I would always, next time I, I make something with a genuine fisherman knit, not just a rib knit, but a fisherman knit, I would do a band rather than that hem. Now the cover stitch machine did not like this fabric. I did a practice to see if I could hem it with the cover stitch machine. And in the end, I just did a single row of stitching because the fabric just cannot behave. I really love the way it looks. I'll pop in a photo. And that was my second make. Now I forgot to say with the bathers, with the bathers, with the Cottesloe bathers, I made a straight size 12 and I found that they fitted everywhere really well, just a little bit too long in the body for me because I'm short. So I'm not short in the legs, I'm short in the torso. So especially from the bust to the waist section. So the other thing I have made, I made a Nerida Hansen half sleeve dress and I made this in my Art Deco fabric. So this is the Art Deco fabric. I will put photos in because you can see it better. And there's the brooch that I bought to go on the front. And there's, and I just have attached the scarf drape section, whatever you call it, so that it goes over the back with, um, just with the brooch and it's draped over the back. And I've got these tassels on the end of it, which I've also got on the hem and on the edges of the sleeve. Now with this dress, I'll just take the brooch off so it doesn't wreck the dress. So that's the brooch. And that's the long drape scarf that I made to go on it. Just out of a piece of chiffon. And this is the dress. 
Now the changes I made to the pattern were, I made the front and the back both V-necks. So this is the back, this is the front. And if I could make it stay on the coat hanger, the front and the back, the V is pretty even. So it's pretty much the same V at the back as it is at the front. So let me talk to you about this pattern. So this is a pattern I got when I went on Nerida Hansen Big Sewing Day Out. And it's called the half sleeve dress. And as you can see, it's got a crew neck, which is actually quite high. And it's got a just a normal crew back neck. So I made the size 12 in that as well. I did make up a bit of a toile in it because I wanted to see where I needed the V to come in the front so that it wouldn't be too revealing. And if the size 12 was going to fit me. So I, yeah, I did. I traced off, I traced off the pattern so that I could use that pattern again. It's a very nice fitting, um, a very nice fitting dress. And one of the reasons I was attracted to it was because like the other dress I made that was a near the handsome one too, it has, um, sleeve facings so the sleeves got a facing which made it much much easier to sew this beading into it i'll show you what the beading comes on so the beading comes on a little strip like that and so i was able to stitch it on and then using a zipper foot of course so that i could get close to the edge and then uh, so on the facing so it was a really nice way of enclosing it I really really like the dress but I really need some navy blue shoes and I don't have any so really happy with the outcome of this dress just need somewhere flashy to wear it to I think so might be nice if you went to high tea somewhere wouldn't it hmm. I'll have to suggest that to Neil but really happy with the dress because I love this fabric and I didn't want to stitch this scarf to it because I want to be able to wear it without it if I didn't want to wear the scarf and the scarf is literally it's really long but when I looked up uh, different types of art deco style dresses and all that sort of thing everything was about elongating everything and lots of them had scarves on them or a big drape and so I thought oh I'll just um I'll just do a drape and put the beading on the end to give it some weight and yeah really happy with the outcome and I did have to purchase a brooch now that's just like a I think it was a nine dollar fifty brooch from eBay not the one I wanted because that was $14,000. So I decided I wouldn't get that one and just got this one instead. Now the, that's all that I have finished, but I have started a nearly completed, started a nearly completed my simplicity with the, half wrap skirt at the front which was this pattern I'm loving this fabric I was just waiting on the zip and it's just arrived so it has got sort of this little tie this little tie is just supposed to hook through a couple of like little D rings but I don't have any D rings but I have got some charms and I've got some charms and one of them is a, like a tiny pair of scissors. So I might see how sharp they are on the ends. They don't open. They're just like a fixed charm and see if I can 
somehow attach that and put it through like it is like little D rings. So I've now got my invisible zip and so I will be able to finish those pants but loving this fabric, it's beautiful. If anybody's ever sewn Tencel before, it took me a little while to get it right with what needle I would use. And I am assuming that everybody tests their needle out the same way that I do. I started off with a size 12. I started by doing rows of stitching, as you can see there, with different needles. So the first one I tried was a Microtex in a 12 and it was a bit a bit uneven and it acted like it didn't like it. So then I tried a Universal 10, still didn't like it much. And I actually settled on a Microtex 8, which means I have to manually thread it because the needle threader on my machine doesn't go through a size 8 needle. So that is how I tested it. Because it was this fabric, and it's not a fabric I sew with all the time, and I think different 10 cell fabrics have a different percentage of different fabrics in them. And so um, that's why I decided that I would test it out. But really, really happy with the pattern. Nice drape on it. Very nice drape on it. So I will have that finished soon. I'm making a pair of pyjama pants for my grandson because it, I had fabric with penguins on it, but I don't have enough for a top. So I'm just doing a long white, long sleeve t-shirt and putting the penguin fabric on as a pocket. So that's what I'm doing at the moment. Then I'll be going on to that white Celeste shirt by Style Arc. I'm tempted to, I just don't know whether or not to do a 12 for it. It's a lot of pattern pieces. So you can sort of adjust as you go, but hmm, I'll have to see how it goes. I'll have to, I haven't actually opened the pattern and had a look at the pattern pieces, so I will have to do that so I can see it when I'm feeling much better. So before my pain medication wears off, please like and subscribe. Everyone have a fabulous week and I'll get back to you when I can. It depends how much better I get. Hopefully those antiviral drugs start working soon and I feel a lot better, but we'll see. At the moment, I have to stay home, have to keep away from everybody. Hope my eye gets a bit better because it's just I'm not sure if that's better than it was before because I can't see without my glasses on. So it was red all the way around and I can see white in the middle now. So. That must be getting better. Um, there's really not very much you can do for your eye. The antiviral drugs are supposed to take care of that. But I have got antibiotic drops as well. Make sure it doesn't get infected. And what else can you do? So everybody have a wonderful week. I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.